What would you do if you found an enemy who had a belief system that was pure evil? The idea that this enemy holds about life, about what's right, what's wrong, about how to live, about how to how to wage war, how to run your society in peace was nothing but badness, nothing but evil. It's entirely unrighteous, unjust, and unclean. It's entirely dark and vile and foul. What would you do if you found an enemy such as this who was so deceptive and so manipulating that every time they try to talk to you, whatever they're doing is to their advantage. And basically, whatever deal they're going to offer you, whatever they say, it's always going to 100% help them and 100% weaken you. Even if they offer you peace, even if they offer you mercy, even if they offer you money, even if they give you something that you think you want, the way that they're doing it is always going to be harmful to you, to your people, and to the morals of your society, and eventually to the, to the survival of your society. What would you do if you faced an enemy that was so deceptive and, and their belief system is so evil that, per, that even participating with it, just making a single treaty with them, making an agreement with them, making a, a pact with them, making a non-aggression pact with them is itself an evil act. Think about the Japanese in World War II, slaughtering nearly the entire population. No, the yes, the entire population of China that they came in contact with. As far as the Japanese were able to succeed, to conquer the land of China, they killed everyone. Wherever they found civilians of China, they killed the Chinese. They killed them. They killed the Laotians. They killed the Vietnamese. They killed the Filipinos. They killed the Australians, anyone they found, the Koreans. They killed them. What would you do? You know, and think about, think about Germany slaughtering 27 million Russians, slaughtering so many Jews, slaughtering civilians left and right, throwing them in concentration camps to to contain and kill them. Think about it. What if Winston Churchill had decided that the moral thing to do, the good thing to do, would be to make peace with Adolf Hitler, to make peace with the leadership of Japan, of Japan, and to surrender or to make peace with them or to say, please, Hitler, don't bomb us, don't invade us, just... Leave us alone, and then you can fight Russia, and you can fight whoever you want. Just leave us alone. And this is the deal that actually Adolf Hitler offered Winston Churchill. Adolf Hitler offered Winston Churchill that very deal. We won't bomb you. We won't invade you. Just leave us alone and let us do our thing. And think about the attitude that goes behind that. The Germans considered their bombing their oppression, their slaughter of civilians, their, you know, abuse to be the authority. Our bombs are the authority. Leave us alone and we won't bomb you. But if you don't leave us alone, we're going to bomb you. And then we're just going to destroy you all. But the intent of Hitler was to have the British leave him alone. Then he could focus his entire attention on the Russians. He would defeat Russia. Then, with Russia defeated, he would go and destroy the British. Because now there's no one to help. And this is one example. It's just one example. There's many examples. There's many situations and scenarios you can, you can become aware of and think about. But it's the situation where 
an evil an evil person such as Adolf Hitler or someone who shall not be named um, who is in front of you right now makes you a deal and says let's have peace and we'll just equally destroy you know we'll just do our thing and you have peace and then you do you 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 agree with the deal you take the deal and then what do they do they destroy their enemies and then they turn their attention on you and now you're all alone you know let us destroy just let us destroy russia we'll leave you alone then they come back and they destroy you too you know it's sort of like neville chamberlain he let Hitler conquer the entire land of Europe before he did anything. It took letting Hitler get all the way to France before Neville Chamberlain did anything. It's like when someone tells you to dig your own grave, you know? They're going to shoot you anyway. Why would you spend the effort to dig your own grave? You might as well refuse and let them shoot you, and then they have to dig your grave, at least you're making them do some work. Put the fingerprints on the shovel, you know? If you can imagine, you know, it's not, easy, it's not always easy to do. Evil can take hard work. But it is possible to have a nation or a culture or a belief system or a government that is so evil that every single desire and every single plan and every single idea and every single initiative that they have and every desire that they have and every every single activity that they have and every thought that goes on inside of their heads every thought of their heart is 100% evil it's 100% destroying people destroying what's good, destroying what's right, attacking and destroying anyone and everything around them so that they are the only ones, so that they can keep their power. Can you imagine an enemy, a villain, some, someone who's so bad that every single deal or negotiation or treaty, every kind of pact, every kind of compromise, any kind of compromise that they would offer you would be 100% destruction to your own people, destruction to yourselves, and betrayal of your own people. And, you know, it would cause your own destruction. It would cause your people to be weaker. It would, it would reduce your chances of survival. It would undermine you. It would plant weeds in your garden so that you think you're going to have peace. But within two years, your people have switched sides to join the enemy because you're letting their spies come into your country and they foment insurrection. It's not good. So I'm, I'm really talking about Winston Churchill here, but I'm only using him as an example. I'm talking about the, the principle of non-negotiation. We're not going to negotiate. We're not going to surrender. We are not going to negotiate with you. We're not going to consider your ideas. We're not going to sit down at the table. We're not going to offer you a deal. We're not going to take a deal. We're going to destroy you. We're going to win. We're going to defeat your evil government. We're going to defeat your evil ideas. We're going to defeat your evil system. We're going to destroy your evil society. And we're going to do what's right. And we're going to stick by our morals. We're going to stick by our guns. And we're going to be just fine. Thank you. We don't need your mercy, Satan. We don't need your mercy, Lord Vader. We can beat you. We don't need your mercy, Hitler. We don't need you to offer not to bomb us. We're going to bomb you back. You know, most people today don't have the courage or the strength or the mental ability to resist evil in this way. To say, wow, I'm not going to negotiate with Darth Vader I'm not going to negotiate with him. I'm not going to compromise with him. I'm not going to work for him. And I'm not going to take his mercy. And I'm not going to c 
come back under his wing. And I'm not going to negotiate with him. We're going to fight him tooth and nail to the death. And if I die, then I die. But I'm going to fight for the what's good. I'm going to fight for what's good, even if it means I have to fight against Darth Vader himself. That takes courage. That takes moral courage. And it's something that most people do not have today. Most people today, most liberals, most millennial liberals, and in fact, most millennial centrists and most millennial moderates, they do not believe in what's right and wrong. They think that you should compromise. They think that it's wrong to wage total war against evil. They think that good and evil are able to um, get married. They're able to live together peacefully. They're able to mix. They're able to coexist. They believe that good and evil, light and dark, fascism and democracy can just live together and be okay and it's just fine. And that you're actually a bad person if you tr if you... If you resist evil, then you're a bad person. That if you stand up against fascism, that if and I'm talking about actual fascism, I am I am a conservative. I am not talk I am I am not with the liberal Antifa thing. they they are fascists. When I talk about Antifa, Antifa are fascists. Liberalism is totalitarianism. Liberalism is leftism, it is fascism itself. It is a form of socialism, just like fascism is a form of socialism. So please don't get confused. I'm not, I don't want to confuse you here. But most people today, they get mad at you. They get mad at you for taking a moral stand. They get angry at you for saying that, you know, good is good and evil is evil. And we, and good people should not negotiate with evil people. They think that you should surrender. You should compromise anything anything at all to avoid offending Hitler. May I, my gosh, we don't want to offend that guy. It's wrong to offend people. It's wrong to be offensive to terrorists who worship the Quran. It's wrong to to offend you know, murdering murdering villains and monsters. It's wrong to offend the monster. We need to respect him. We need to respect his beliefs. We need to honor them we need to honor their belief system. We need to honor their culture. I mean, Darth Vader has a culture. The Empire has a culture. We need to honor that. We need to respect it. We need to embrace it and welcome it and kiss it on the face. Right? No. I tell you truly. No, no, no. Truly, truly, I tell you no. It is not possible to negotiate. And if you do negotiate, then... You are negotiating your own surrender, and you are negotiating and signing your own destruction, your own death warrant. You can negotiate with Satan. You can negotiate with Darth Vader. You can negotiate with Hitler. You can negotiate with, with, with totalitarians and socialists. But... The way that they propose their negotiation deals is always so that you are giving ground, but they are not giving any ground. So you are giving up to them, but they are not giving you anything. And if they did offer to give you something, they betray their word. They wait for you to give. And once you have given them, they go back on their word. It's sort of like a scam. It's sort of like a business deal on Craigslist, and they scam you. So you hand them the money, and then they run away, and they don't give you the item. So maybe you're going to sell some expensive shoes on Craigslist. You hand over the money, and then they turn and run, and they take the shoes with them. You gave them money. You held up your end of the deal. You were honest. You were trying to reach an agreement with them. You handed them the money, and they took your money, and they took their shoes, and they did not give you anything. In fact, maybe they stabbed you. They take your money, punch you in the face. Maybe they try to kill you with a weapon, and then they run away with the shoes and leave you behind. That's, what, that's the kind of evil we're talking about here. It's pure evil. And you know what? 
There are people in the world that are just like Darth Vader. There are people in the world that are just like Adolf Hitler today. There are people in the world just like that criminal who maybe he steal, he takes the shoes, he takes your money, and he leaves you possibly dead on the street. And that's why, that's one reason why Winston Churchill is a true hero. If there's anyone in the whole world that I would listen to as the voice of truth from the 1940s, it would be Winston Churchill, first and foremost. There may be other people, but I'm not aware of their names. But I know Winston Churchill. I've heard of his name. And what he has to say is righteous. But you know what? He's not the only one who says these things over the course of history. The Bible also says the same thing. Don't negotiate with them. Don't make a treaty with them. You have to fight them total war. And you have to win. And that's how God said Israel was supposed to take their land. Because that's the kind of people they were up against. And God even said that there's a difference. There's other countries around the world... If Israel was ever going to go fight against them, then they have a different rules of warfare because they weren't the same sort of people. But the people who were living inside of Canaan, inside of Israel, when the Israelis were supposed to take the land, that's what we're talking about here. That kind of an evil society, that kind of a of ruthless enemies. They're so ruthless. They're so evil that they're not going to do anything but corrupt you if you negotiate with them you might as well plant landmines inside of your 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 playgrounds you know it's just going to destroy you it's like saying fine i agree that i you won't attack us as long as we'll be your slaves and plant landmines in our playgrounds you know it causes you destruction you're putting the seed that's going to grow into a tree you're well so you, you're you're surrendering so you don't have to have a conflict with satan but as a result you have thrown you know oxalis weeds into your into your garden you know you're throwing weeds into your garden and those weeds grow up and destroy everything that you have everything that you own you're welcoming in once you welcome into once you welcome the ideology of your enemy once you once you allow the the ideology of your enemy into your house into your country into your family it grows the ideology grows and it causes destruction and pretty soon your country is falling down in destruction around you because your people have become part of the enemy and they're trying to destroy your country because they think that your country needs to be destroyed because they want to join the other country. So what I want to give you, and thanks for listening this long, what I want to give you is a principle. If you are dealing with an enemy who is committed to evil, if you're dealing with an enemy who is truly, definitely, genuinely evil, have nothing to do with him. Do not have anything to do with him. Do not have anything to do with her. Be their enemy because they are your enemy. And fight against them. Fight against their evil. Do not compromise with them. Do not make an agreement. Do not negotiate with them. Do not surrender to them. Do not give them any help. Do not give them any aid. Do not give them any agreements. Do not cooperate with them. Do not fund them. Do not do anything to have anything to do with them. The only thing you should do is fight against them. Defeat them and destroy them Ideolo ideologically, culturally, socially, or if it's a really a war, physically. But do not have anything to do with them. Do not cooperate or negotiate or compromise with, make a pact, make a treaty, or come to any agreements with bad guys. Because bad guys are evil. And you cannot, and it's not good to negotiate with them. No compromise, no negotiation, and no surrender. Good fights evil, and evil 
fights against good. And if you are on the side of good, then you have to fight against evil tooth and nail to the bitter end, to the death, for victory or destruction. Either you are a good guy and you're going to win the fight or you're a bad guy and you're going to win the fight. But good must destroy evil or evil must destroy good. And I'm going to tell you, good is going to win because Jesus Christ is Lord and evil is not able to win forever. But there are totalitarians and the forces of evil are always totalitarians. You know, Adolf Hitler was elected. He used democracy to gain power. So I'm not saying that totalitarians don't use democracy, but they use democracy in order to try to use the democratic process in order to concentrate their own power. And once they have the power, then they reveal their true face. Adolf Hitler pretended to be friendly until he got elected, and then he revealed the true nature. The, the, his true nature of evil. So that's what I want to tell you, is that totalitarianism, collectivism, leftism is always the force of evil. Even theocracy, like Islamic theocracy, is a form of collectivism, which is left, which is a left-leaning ideology. But the point is, good cannot and should not negotiate with evil and if you are on a person on the if you are a person on the side of good representing the side of good then don't negotiate instead oppose evil don't negotiate with evil instead defeat it thanks for listening god bless you jesus is lord god bless america